Bibles with me to the book of Romans this morning. It's where we're going to be. I'm going to be taking a look this morning at Romans in the six chapters where we're going to, uh, to start and stay for probably the duration here this morning. And I uh, have a lot that we're going to discuss in coming through this. And uh, I guess maybe it might not be your, your, your typical sunrise scripture, but it's, uh, it's what God's put on my heart this morning. That's what we're going to look at. And, uh, you know, uh, there's some things of the, of the resurrection morning and the different times there after this. I'm going to need to call to your mind this morning that... Uh, you know, as, uh, as Mary Magdalene and Peter and John, as they had approached uh, coming to the tomb that was there, uh, and, and they found the stone rolled away, they, they, their heart had sank. Um, the, the, the very picture that they should have got that uh, should have brought joy to their heart, it really put their heart in the pit of their stomach because they was thinking, what, what, what has happened here? What have, uh, uh, what, what have they done? And then, of course, uh, um, I believe it was John that had ran ahead, uh, maybe being a little more younger, a little more spry in his legs, had run ahead, got in there, and, and had looked in and saw that, uh, that, that the Jesus' body was not there. And again, a, a moment that uh, should have brought uh, pure joy to their hearts, um, uh, initially it had brought some, uh, uh, some despair and some discouragement. And um, it, it was hard for them to, to bring back into mind the... The, the things that Jesus had said, that uh, even through all the crucifixion, he told them what was going to happen. Uh, as Peter was denying him, he told Peter that he was going to do that. Um, and he, he had given them so many details of that weekend that it was farthest from their mind. And then you had Thomas who, as they had gathered back together, he wasn't going to believe. Um, but uh, I think it, Jesus had said, uh, you know, blessed are those who believe and have not saw, had, had, has not seen, those have the opportunity uh, to, to touch, to put their fingers through the, the holes in my hands. And, uh, but there was some pretty phenomenal things that happened as Jesus had came in there to them. If you recall... Uh, they was in a, in a room similar to this one with all the doors closed and Jesus came through without a door. You recall that portion of the scripture? I, need, I want you to keep that in mind as we read this this morning because church, what I want to tell you is we have tons of walls that surround us. We have walls that we put up Walls that we think are there for protection, walls that are there for barriers, walls that are there for really this, that, or the other. You name the reason why they're there, but I want you to understand that, uh, uh, you know, Jesus said, or the Word of God tells us that with God all things are possible. So I want you to keep those things in mind as we read this. Uh, we'll come back and we'll, we'll touch on some of those things here momentarily. Uh, but Paul writes to the Roman church here in chapter number 6. He says this. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, and death hath no more dominion over him. 
For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let sin not therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you again here this morning, God, again, we're thankful for the opportunity to be here, God. We're thankful for your word. Father, we're thankful, Lord, that uh, uh, in the rising from that tomb, Lord, that not only did you conquer death, hell, and the grave, but God, you conquered everything, Lord, that we can face. Father, everything that uh, uh, we could come to, Lord, all of our obstacles, our, our hardships, our troubles, our trials, Lord, everything that, uh, uh, that, that the world can throw at us, Lord, nothing can be more excruciating than, Lord, what was thrown upon you, Lord, as you uh, uh, went to trial as an innocent man. Lord, as you was tortured, uh, uh, beat, punished, and crucified as an innocent man, Lord, for simply do the things that I have done, Lord, just for my sins and those that are gathered here this morning, Father, we, uh, we can never give you the, uh, enough praise for that, but uh, uh, God, we're just thankful, Lord, that uh, uh, as you have overcome those things, God, that we are also able to overcome things in our life, God, that we're able to, uh, to, to grow in your grace, to be able to grow in your mind, Lord, to be able to uh, just uh, 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 blossom into a, and flourish as a spiritual being, Father, we ask you, Lord, as we're gathered here in your name here this morning, uh, Lord, that you will be in the midst. God, that uh, uh, you will just bless us, God, that you will strengthen us, Lord, that you will empower us, Lord, and that you will be the one that speaks to our hearts, Lord. It wouldn't be anything that uh, uh, the preacher says or the song leader sings, but God, it would be what you speak to our hearts, Lord, that we hear. Father, we just ask you, Lord, that uh, uh, you, you would do so. Father, help us just to listen to you, Father, not to uh, focus on the things of the world or uh, uh, what we're going to do later or how pretty it is outside, Father. Uh, uh, just uh, allow us just to simply be in your presence and uh, uh, absorb your grace here this morning. God, we love you. We praise you. We ask these things in your Son, Christ Jesus' name, and amen. Coming through and looking at all this portion of scripture that is here, and again the things that uh, uh, we kind of uh, brought back into into our mind here. There's a few uh, points in this that we're kind of going to dwell on, but uh, what I want you to understand that uh, I'm not preaching to you about baptism this morning, even though that's the scripture that we read. The things that we looked at. Uh, but, uh, we, we understand and it's something that uh, uh, the way I, I, I teach it to those who come and uh, uh, decide to follow through in believers' bati- baptism, that it's a very symbolic thing. And, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the falling it backwards into the water it represents the death of the old man. The uh, being submerged in the water is the, uh, uh, the uh, being buried with Christ and then coming up is being resurrected uh, with life renewed. I want you to understand that that's the part we're going to focus on this morning is that resurrection of the new man that is there. I want you to know that we can put whatever kind of water you want to put in there. The water's not going to do anything for you, simply other than make you wet, get in your ears, and run out your nose. That's all the water is going to do. The water has no uh, power in it. I want you to know that all the power that you need was shed on the cross of Calvary by the blood of the Lamb. I want you to know that that is what is going to cleanse you. That is what is going to wash your sins white as so. And I don't have any thing to do with the water, but again, we're not preaching on baptism this morning. We're talking about that resurrection, that, that being raised new. This verse here, number four, that it says, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we. I want you to understand that you know, it, it took some kind of, uh, uh, we'll never really know the amount of, uh, 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 of glory and the power that, 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 that God would have had to have used to, to bring Christ out of that tomb. But in order to bring a, a, a wicked, vile uh, sinner, uh, someone who is uh, as, as fleshly as they come, to bring them out of that into a state of being... Let me be careful how I word this. Accepted, maybe amongst God's people, 
That takes a whole lot of grace, amen? It takes a lot of grace to be able to take this. All that you see, whether you're looking at me or whether you're looking in the mirror, it takes a lot of grace to remove all the world from that to where God can see his son. I want you to know that that's all done through the blood of Christ. It's, uh, uh, that, that's not our topic of conversation this morning. I just need you to dig deep and dig your heels in and stay with me. Verse 5, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Let's talk about that for just a second, shall we? We understand the, the, the death that Jesus endured on the cross of Calvary. You understand that the Romans were famous for the amount of torture and the amount of pain that they could inflict on a human body and keep it as live as long as they possibly could and make it as excruciating as it could possibly be. I want you to understand all that they did. You think the number of stripes that they had give Jesus, uh, uh, they, they, they stated the number they did because one more was known to kill somebody. They wanted to make sure that Jesus endured as much pain as he could possibly endure. So much so, the Bible tells us this, you can go back into Isaiah, you can find this here, that he was marred more than any man. That you couldn't look upon him and tell that your Jesus was a human being. You could not tell that he was a man. How many of you like to have your hair pulled? You imagine handfuls ripped out, not only of your head, but in your beard also. you imagine that? No. Pain. Jesus understands pain. But let me, let, let me make this connection here to you. I want you to understand that as you are overcoming your death, that whatever sin it is that you have, I want you to understand that that too can be painful. Uh, coming, you know, there is nothing... I spent, altogether, I've got really close to 15 years in law enforcement from everything that I've done. And there's nothing more painful than watching a drug addict come off of that. I mean, they shake, they convulse, they're sick, they're this or that. I mean, it is an excruciating experience. But if they can come out the other side clean... That's victory, amen? Sometimes getting over whatever our sin is and not living in that, I want you to understand that uh, as that part of you is dying, as that part of you is going away, you read the verses, you read the scripture that is here, you take this, you go and study that. When the sinful man, when that needs to die and go away, it may not be a pleasant experience. It may be something that... Uh, Hurts. But it says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. If the Bible tells you that the old man is going to be crucified with him, is that going to tell you that it's going to be a nice, easy, smooth sailing experience? No, but I'm not telling you that being a born-again believer hurts. That's not what I'm saying either. It really depends on what your, what your sin is. Let me tell you, if you're an alcoholic and you're going to dry out, that's probably going to hurt. Amen? If, you, if you're going to give up nicotine, that, that's probably going to hurt at some point. I mean, that's something that your body's going to crave. If you, I mean, hey, if you're just giving up caffeine, there's going to be days that you're going to have an excruciating headache from that. I want you to understand that when the old man dies, that it might hurt. Jesus didn't stop going to the cross of Calvary because it hurt, church. Jesus didn't stop trucking up the hill, up Calvary's hill, because it was hard. He didn't, I mean, I want you to understand that this man was beat to the point that he couldn't even carry his own cross, that they made uh, so, some other fellow named Simon who was just kind of passing through. They said, hey, you carry the cross for him. Somebody might have to help you get there.
Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not, read that with me, that we should not serve sin. We gathered here this morning, why? why, why? I mean, I understand it's a sunrise service. Yeah, we gathered here this morning because we're going to have breakfast later. Uh, all those things are uh, maybe important in some ways, but why are we here this morning? Why are you able to come to Oakdale Baptist Church and to praise and to worship God? Why are we able to do that? Don't overthink it. It's because the tomb was empty. It's because we have a risen, living Savior. Amen? How many of you, when you pray, do you say the word Lord? Anybody? Anybody ever referred to God as Lord? What does Lord mean? Matthew, Matt, you always answer my questions. What does Lord mean? Very ruler, ruler of. If you go into uh, uh, to, to Middle Ages, ancient times, or you get into where you had lords and peasants and things, that there was somebody that was ruler over whatever aspects it was of your life. Now let me ask you this. Verse 6 here says that we should not serve sin. Christian, what is our duty? Who are we to serve? Starts with a G. God, we're to serve God. Amen, absolutely. That's why we are here to serve a living, risen Savior. And how do we do that? Now, let, let me, before anybody gives this to me, let me help you out here. It's not by showing up on Wednesday. It's not by showing up on Sunday, and it ain't by showing up on Sunday night. That's not how you serve God. I want you to understand that the Bible tells us that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but nowhere in Scripture do you find that you should meet three times a week. Won't find it. But we think, well, I showed up on Wednesday, so I served God. I ignored him all day Monday and Tuesday, but I showed up Wednesday night. When God was bidding me to speak to whomever it was that he was wanting me to speak to, I ignored that, but I showed up for the sunrise service. That's just because I was wanting some of them maple, whatever them things was. Amen? But how, how do we serve sin? Christian, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, born-again believer who is dead to sin. Let me ask you, how do we serve that? When we give in to it, when we yield to it, when we continue going back to the, uh, to, to the same things. You know, uh, 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 you get into Proverbs, you get into different parts of Scripture where it talks about that the dog will return to his vomit. I want you to understand, you can wash the pig, it's still going to go back and waller in the mud. We're still flesh. Sometimes we still want to get in the mud. But you've got to realize, you're a clean pig now. Our mindset should remain that way. Verse 7, it says, For he that is dead is freed from sin. You don't have to. Let's talk about those walls we, 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 we talked about earlier. You know, those walls that are, you know, we can't, I can't walk through that wall. But if I tried hard enough and I had the, the tools, I could go right through it. It's not really going to keep me in here. How many of you lock your doors at night? I want you to understand something. That ain't going to keep anybody out that wants in. It might slow them down a minute, but it ain't going to keep nobody out. All these things, all these barriers that we throw up, that we begin to think, well, I, I, I can't do this and I can't do that. I, I can't get over this. I, I, I've done this too long. I've, uh, uh, whatever, what, whatever the name of your wall is that is there, when Jesus was resurrected, I want you to know that he went through them. Does the word of God not tell us that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? Nod your heads this way. Who is in you? The same one who walked through that wall, amen? Tell me again why you can't get through it. Tell me again why you can't get over it. Go ahead and give me another excuse. Let's go, let's have it. Why can't we? Why can't we get over this hump? Well, it's because of this or that. It's because you don't understand, preacher. I may not. Friend, you're exactly right. I may not understand. 
But I know verse 7 says, For he that is dead is freed from sin, and he that is dead means he that is crucified, the old man. He that is uh, uh, received life uh, anew, he that is a born-again believer, he that has accepted the free pardon of sin that Christ went to the cross of Calvary to pay for, that's who we're talking about this morning. So tell me again why you can't. Because you don't want to. Can, can we just say it like that? Can we just simply say, I can't get over this wall because I don't want to. Don't give me the I can'ts. Don't give me the uh, you don't understand. Don't give me the it's hard. Just say it like it is, church. Christian, I want you to look at yourself in the mirror and I want you to be honest with you and God for maybe the first time in a long time and simply say, I don't want to. And let God go to work on your heart then. I don't, I don't want to. I don't, I, I, you know the reason why I still serve this part of sin is because I want to. You know the reason why I don't serve God wholeheartedly? Because I don't want to. Say it like it is. How many of you like to be told the truth? Until you hear the truth, right? Then you don't want to hear it no more. You wish they'd have said something different. Jameson, sit down, son. If we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Read that again with me. Read it back with me, church. Romans chapter 6, verse 9. Knowing that Christ being dead from, or being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. You got that? For the wages of sin is death. I want you to make the connection with me right here this morning. Right here at the sunrise service. I want you to catch this here with me. That we should not allow sin to have dominion over our lives. We talked about who says Lord when you pray. Who refers to God as Lord, right? Most of you raised your hands. Let me tell you, if... if, 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 if the Lord is our Lord, then who are we serving? Who are we giving our service to? Who is receiving the bulk of our time? Where is our efforts going? For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Church, we can talk about how this is talking about the resurrection of Christ. This is talking about you. This is talking about you, the resurrection of you being the new man. You died to sin once. You know, that was the falling backwards into the water and being buried underneath it. But you was raised with life uh, renewed. You have that new life that is in you. We do not have talking to somebody the other day. I'm going to give you a prime example of how we Christians operate. They said, do you have a sunrise service? I said, yeah, we do. I said, sort of. They said, what do you mean sort of? I said, well, we don't really do sunrise. We do seven, so like sunrise plus an hour. It's kind of what we do. Well, how come you do it that way? Well, that gives everybody time to get up, and if anybody's, we used to cook and, you know, kind of give everybody time to do stuff. That way nobody slept through Easter service that morning, right? I mean, we'll tell it like it is. That's kind of, oh. Well, what cemetery do you go to? Well, years ago, we used to go to this, and right over here was at the uh, Grant and Ard Cemetery. Is that what this one is right here behind us? No, which one is that? That one's on up the road. Which one's this one? I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's a cemetery just about 100 yards that way. We used to do that one, but as, uh, you know, people kind of, Age caught up with them. There's a little slick bank right there. It make people walk up it. And I mean, you guys know how Easter is. It can be 30 or it can be 80, and it's usually 30, like it was this morning, 34 degrees when we left the house. So what do you do? Well, we have a sunrise service, but it's at 7 o'clock, and we actually just have it in the sanctuary. That's a really good idea. Really, I thought so too. I didn't think it's half bad. Well, I wish we'd start doing that. Why don't you? Well, we've just always done it this way. Christian, that's our problem. We've just always done it this way. You know, you've just always lived in sin until you got saved. You know why you keep doing it? Because you've just always done it that way. We cannot 
be renewed in anything. We can't be renewed in life. We can't be renewed in spirit. You know why we come set in revival? We leave the same way. Uh, uh, we leave the same way we came in because that's just why we've always did it. We ain't never really believed in giving everything over to God. We ain't never really believed in uh, letting God be our, our Lord and our Savior and serve Him. That's just the way we've always did it. Why? Could somebody please give me an answer as to why? Why do we allow that to be it? Well, that's just the way it's always been done. We'll do it different. Get up this morning and do it different. Get up this morning and be resurrected in a new life. Be a new creature because that, friend, is exactly what the Word of God says. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Just because you've always did it, don't do it anymore. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Just because that's what you've always did. Jesus walked through walls. Our walls hold us in. They put a stone in front of the tomb. Put a, they, they took the, the wax from a candle. They melted it. They poured it on it. They used the signet ring. They stamped it. That way nobody would know to mess with it. And if that seal was broken, then the, a, a pilot would have known. None of those things could hold your Jesus in. Did, did the stone have to be rolled away for Jesus to come out? Nope, but the stone needed to be rolled away for them to see him. Let me make this connection there for you too. Let me make this easy on you this morning, Christian. Stone didn't have to be rolled away. Jesus wasn't in there. And Je they didn't have to roll the stone out for Jesus to walk out. Jesus had already... Gone, right? Do you believe that this morning? Let me tell you, you don't have to air out your dirty laundry to everybody in the church. If you want to roll the stone back so they can see in, and you can let them know that, hey, I'm not there anymore, you can do that. But friend, with Jesus, you don't have to. You can be resurrected in life renewed without the stone being rolled away. But then don't be afraid to walk through the wall. Don't be afraid to go right on through it. Don't let our walls of sin that we have built hold us there any longer. Be able to move freely right on about. The Bible tells us this. As those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under grace. What did it take to save you? Grace. What are we saved by? Grace. You going to be able to keep those this week? No. But you know what you got? Grace. Just because you have grace, can you live however you want to live? No. Did the Bible not just say several verses ago, God forbid? No. But you know what? You have grace there when you mess up. You don't have grace there to live the way you want to. Grace is not a sin license. Grace is not a, a ignore God license. Let me tell you, friend, if, if, if Jesus is your Lord, then stop serving sin. Would you walk out to whatever your habits are and call it Lord? You sure wouldn't, would you? But you serve it. Call it like it is. Say it like it is. I bet you you'd have an easier time getting past it if you'd call it Lord. Or we can just pretend to ourselves that, you know, this is the way I've always did it. It's the way it's always been done. don't have to be church it don't have to be you don't have to let it let me tell you death hell and the grave couldn't hold back your jesus your jesus lives inside you do not tell me why you can't do whatever it is we have been given victory through and by jesus christ church live like it stand together with me this morning